Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life. And you know what time it is. It's Tuesday, so we need to try some Lexio Divina. So, you know, I've been wearing this sweatshirt. I kind of wear this like my grandmother used to wear her house coat. I wear sweatshirts around the house to cover when I'm doing chores. So then you can see, yes, I filmed these all in one week. I'm wearing my Smokey Bear shirt again. But I plan on doing these Lexios with you. Um, but I'll be listener. So I'm reading them now, but I'll be a listener later. So yeah, I have on my shirt, but I'm, I'm getting ready for some, some time with God. And so I'm gonna, you know, clean myself up a little bit. I washed my hands, came in, changing to my reading and computer glasses, put the sweater on, you know, put on, put on the armor of God here, friends. We're going to get together. We're going to have a peaceful time. If you fail in church, you get this, um, idea of putting the sweater on it is. It's, it's saying, you know, we're sensory people. That's why all the sacraments have both a sensory thing, you know, like water or laying on of hands. That's why they have all those things because we are sensory people. God just use our bodies. And so we're sensory. So go ahead. You can fully get changed if you want to for Lexio, but I find having a nice sweater or something on it really changes my attitude, if you're a gentleman, you could go grab a suit jacket. Just put it on. It's just going to be for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Go ahead, put it on. And you are going to feel the difference. The difference, what it does to you when you have a special one that you wear for prayer. It could be a sweater for guys too. Um, ladies, you could have a shawl. Um, ooh, prayer shawls are lovely as well. So grab something to put on. If you're um, someone who's homebound or a nursing home, maybe you have a free blanket that you like to put on. Do whatever you need to do to get ready to quiet, quiet your mind. Say to your body, hey, we're doing something different now. We're going to spend some time with the Lord. And so as we do this Lexio Divina, I was talking to you a little bit about Claire and she mentioned her gaze in her second letter to Lady Agnes of Prague. And here is a quote of, of part of what she said, where we get to look into her spirituality, look upon him who became contemptible for you and follow him, making yourself contemptible in this world for him. Your spouse, though more beautiful than the children of men, became for your salvation the lowest of men, was despised, struck, scourged, untold times throughout his entire body, and then died amid the suffering of the cross." Gaze upon him, consider him, contemplate him as you desire to imitate him. If you suffer with him, you shall rejoice with him. If you die with him on the cross of tribulation, you shall possess a heavenly mansions in the splendor of the saints. And in the book of life, your name shall be called glorious among the men. So even as we put on our sweater or our jacket, our shawl or blanket, whatever we put on to put ourselves in the presence of God, Claire is reminding us to put on the crucified Christ, to look on him beaten and bruised, look upon his sorrowful longing, his crying out to the Lord from the cross, enter into that, become that, live that and that's part of what we're doing in Lexio Divina. We're going to listen to scripture, but we're going to try and, and use it to help us in our faith journey to draw closer to Christ. Um, so on these day ones, we're going to listen to the reflection. It's a fairly short one today. We're doing Ecclesiasticus. We're continuing with Ecclesiasticus 43. We're going to look at verses six through nine, and we're going to contemplate how this relates to Christ, how it relates to us in our life, how we can live these verses this week. And then we're going to come back on Thursday and do kind of an examine. And we're going to hear those verses again. But now we're going to look at them as to how did we live it this week? Are we capable of it? What graces do we need? God gives us all the graces we need. We just have to ask. So what graces do you need? Do you need something specific? Do you need to go to, have you realized you needed to go to confession? Did you find a stumbling block? Maybe there's a stumbling block in the wording of the, 
the scripture. And so you're going to need to look that up from a trusted Catholic source, talk to a spiritual director about it. I, I'm not asking you to jump out at your priest, but if you have a spiritual partner as well, someone that you discuss these things, you could ask them. Um, and so find them out. If there's a passage that's sticking for you, you may want to study it a little bit more deeply. Maybe you're being challenged by God to go more deeply in your faith. You know, like you have the, the dark night of the senses and dark night of the soul. There are challenges to help us to go deeper into our faith. So sometimes a, a passage in scripture sticks in your brain, but it's actually sticking there so that you take more time with it. Okay, friends, let's begin. We're going to start with the sign of the cross and then St. Francis's prayer before the crucifix. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Summe gloriose Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et da mihi fidem rectum, spem certum <coughs> et caritatem perfectum, domine ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum. Amen. And the moon in all her seasons is for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of the festival day, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. The month is called after her name, increasingly wonderfully in her perfection, being an instrument of the armies on high, shining gloriously in the firmament of heaven. Well, friends, remember that you can pause here and Really ponder that, journal it, draw it out, whatever you need to do. Write down, sometimes it's just writing down uh, a few words or a word that jump out at you. Take the time, pause here, pause the video if you need to, take as long as you need. We're going to read it two more times. And the moon in all her season is for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of the festival day a light that decreaseth in her perfection. The month is called after her name, increasingly wonderfully in her perfection, being an instrument of the armies on high, shining gloriously in the firmament of heaven. I don't know about you, friends, but I read the Bible in its entirety last year and Ecclesiasticus I read fairly recently. I didn't hear some of this and I'm completely blown away and shattered by it. Just, whoa, one more time. And the moon in all her season is for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. For the moon is the sign of the festival day a light that decreaseth in her perfection. The moon is called after her name, increasingly wonderfully in her perfection, being an instrument of the armies on high, shining gloriously in the firmament of heaven. Wow. Wow. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. 